listening to Real Sisters Talk. Find out more about our show and listen to previous episodes at realsisterstalk.com. You say her name, sweet baby. You got it down like a bad girl in the floor. And you say her name, lovely lady. Oh, you make it sound like a dumb Hello and welcome to Real before. Sisters. I'm your host, Linda, and I'm here in Spokane on a beautiful spring day with a very special guest, Tess Henley. Tess was chosen as one of IMR Magazine's Best Women of Indie Music 2012. She has several albums and a new one she's working on now with Dice Ra. She is multi-talented, passionate old soul in R&B style. She's a singer-songwriter, and she hails from my sister city, a city that's quickly becoming the epicenter of soul, Seattle, Washington. Tess, welcome to the show, and thanks for stopping by today. Thanks for having me. So can is kind of near and dear to my heart, too. So, Do you have any family or friends over here? Yeah, my um, my dad's side is from Spokane. Oh, they are? Well, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I was born in Tacoma, so it's kind of like we kind of switched oh, okay. sides of the state. Yeah. But I go over to Seattle a lot. Do you come over here a lot? Um, I haven't been in a while. I used to go to the Hoop Fest tournament oh, over yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are, you a, are you a basketball player? Yeah, I, I play for fun now, but it was definitely a big part of my life growing up. Now, you know, a couple yeah. months ago, two or three months ago, we had another soul singer from Seattle on, Alan Stone. Mm-hmm. Have you ever worked with Alan? Um, I've played a couple shows with Alan, and he actually he sang on a, uh, a song that we did or a project we did for my cousin Carly. And so, um, and we've known Alan for a while now, so yeah. Sounds great. Well, you know, he's from over here. Yeah. yeah Actually, even town. a smaller smaller town than Spokane. He's up north, I think, from, like, Colville or somewhere. <laughs> somewhere yeah. Really small. Chewila? Chewila? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. Chewila. Yeah, we came over. He was over in Spokane performing at the Knitting Factory. So we went and saw him in person, did his interview. And then I think the whole yeah. entire town of Chewila came down to support him <laughs> at the Knitting Factory that night. But Oh, so, I'm sure. You mentioned a cousin that also sings, because I know you had a brother who sings, or have a brother who mm-hmm. sings, and a yeah. your mom apparently sings in a band as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my cousin Carly, um, she passed away two years ago, um, but she was a singer-songwriter, and when she passed away, we ended up taking all of her songs that she had finished or not finished and ended up recording all of them in the studio and putting together her album. And then we had the release show, and Alan was there, and a bunch of Seattle artists, kind of a coming together of a lot of different artists, which was really cool. Wow. Um, I didn't, I had no idea about any of that. So that's the thing. When you start yeah. these interviews, you don't know where they're going to go. So Carly was I know. your cousin. She passed away two years ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, so the music that you recorded was music she had written, and then other people sang the songs at the Yeah, benefit? she... Yeah, she had recorded um, like an out or an EP, and then um, she had a bunch of songs. You know, she maybe she did demos in the studio of, or maybe she just had like her um, Mac recordings or like Garage Band recordings of them, just her guitar and her vocal in her room or something. And then she had a bunch of songs she's written out lyrics. So we took the songs that we had a vocal for, for her. The fresh smell of earth falling from the sky Little drops of heaven that come from angels' eyes The sweetness brings me to my kind of rebuilt some of them we kind of tweaked some of the ones she already had finished um, or remixed them and then we asked you know our artist friends like Alan um, Natalie Klausner is another one um, she's from Portland and I think Carson was on it your brother Carson. yeah and uh, just 
a, f- a few other local artists, and they they sang her songs, the rest of her songs that we didn't have a vocal for. Cry just hearing that story. down on my face I feel brand new. Oh, it was an emotional project altogether. Um, but it was a sold out show at the showbox market and it was just a really I'm just glad that, you know, we could finish that, you know. I love the Was it a recording too? Yeah, we made a whole um, album with her songs and the the songs that the other the local artists sang of hers, and it's called "Love the Skin You're In." And um, that the Showbox show was her release show. writing and I recorded my first album in my freshman and sophomore year at the University of Washington and then once I finished the album I started playing gigs and shows around Seattle. Pretty much once once I got to UW is when I kind of started to take it on a little more seriously and then once I graduated that's when I really could dedicate full time to it. Make it simple so that I can put it on repeat And when I hear your song I'll be singing So don't worry one point you know my brother Carson and then our sister and my cousin Carly and then our other cousin Carly's brother within you know five years had all been going to UW together at one point or another oh wow um, that's kind of yeah cool. so that was fun yeah. yeah so all of you were musical yeah I mean we kind of grew up my mom got us started early And my dad, my dad loves music. He doesn't play or sing or anything, but he just, he's always playing something new and finding some new music. And so, yeah, it's just kind of been a part of our lives. Your melody, make it simple So that I can't put it on repeat And when I hear your song, I'll be singing inspired you to go with the soul and the R&B style? Well, I I listened to a lot of different music growing up, and um, between my mom and my dad, just playing rock, 
soul Motown singer songwriters. I I just kind of gravitated towards the soul. I don't know why, you know. I <laughs> it's just something I really that really moved me, and um, and so I started listening to a lot of Stevie Wonder and Jackson Five and Marvin Gaye and all the soul greats, Aretha Franklin, and you know. Um, and then I kind of got into neo soul R and B, like in sixth grade, seventh grade, and on through high school. That's, and that's pretty and, young. Yeah, I started. Well, I think it was around sixth grade that Sister Act Two came out, mm-hmm. and that was with Lauren Hill. I love gospel music too, and um, that movie is still one of my favorites to date. Mm-hmm. But I love the music. And I really just, I really had gotten into India Ari at that time and Brian McKnight and more of the R&B neophil side. And I saw some of the video on your site, TessHinley.com. There's a great video, which really sums up your life pretty darn good. <laughs> I mean, you're right at this point. But um, part of it in it, you were playing a little Gershwin, and it looks as if you were uh-huh. trained classically pretty darn well before you went with, you, you branched off in the sixth grade to the soul uh-huh. and R&B side. My mom had us start taking lessons from our, the same teacher we had, you know, up until my senior year of high school. Have us, my mom would make us practice every day before school, and we'd have monthly recitals, and then we went through all the Suzuki books, starting from book one and then on, and I, I played classical music all through high school, but I started playing, you know, I started playing and singing more like pop songs and songs that I wanted to play in first or second grade. I started doing the school talent shows. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of when I started opening the other side, like opening the playing and singing and um, playing pop contemporary songs. Experience starting so young with Suzuki, being a three-year-old pianist, and all your recitals and your talent shows and everything. Do you think that helped you not have to really suffer stage fright as much as some people do? Because I've talked to a lot of performers oh. who had almost ended their career. <laughs> you know, I still suffer from stage fright, and Suzuki and uh, classical music and those recitals is such a different. Um, it's very, it's very mechanical, and there's no real like. You don't have to talk. You just bow, sit down, play the song. Mm-hmm. You don't have to look at anybody. So once I started playing talent shows and that kind of stuff, that's when I had to mm-hmm. realize, okay, I'm, I need to entertain a little more now. That's when the stage fright <laughs> kicked in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> 
but I've definitely grown quite a bit from then. <laughs> well, how did you overcome it? I, I'm always fascinated by, you know, musicians who overcome it because I've, yeah. I've, I'm a pianist and I've always had stage fright. I, I, you don't really uh-huh. grow out of it. Yeah. That's pretty sad to say. But, you know, Barbara Streisand, um, oh, yeah. she had it really bad and she stopped performing live for like three decades. So mm-hmm. and look at her. So it, it can strike yeah. anyone. But how did you overcome it? Well, I feel for Barbara Streisand because I still, like, I really do get bad. It's just, it depends on the weather, really, like, if I'm going to get nervous or not. But I think the key is to, once I started playing a lot of shows and just it became a regular thing, um, that's when I got more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. But if, if I take a break, like, for Carly's album, we took kind of a hiatus. And then coming back, to perform once you take a break it just kind of throws you off a little you know mm-hmm. I've um, heard a lot of people say that yeah so you just have to keep keep playing and, and putting yourself in uncomfortable situations mm-hmm. um, like the other night I was actually in LA with Carson last week and there was like a jam a jam session going on at this place um, in Venice Beach and the band was so good just top of the line musicians and um Carson had met the lead singer and um he came up to us during a break and Carson kind of threw me into the fire and he's like oh yeah you should get her up and and sing Mm -hmm. and uh you know that's just oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's just one of those things where you know I knew I couldn't say no because I have to force myself to to do those kind of things Mm -hmm. to become more comfortable with it well, let's introduce a song from one of your older albums. I have from Appetizer, I have Boy in the Window. And that was also the one that they mentioned in IMR Magazine last year. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that and the article in IMR Magazine? Okay. Yeah, I I wrote that song when I was going to UW and I was living in an apartment building. And I lived next door to another complex. I actually wrote it about a guy who I lived across from. Mm-hmm. And so from my from my bedroom window, I could see his bedroom window um, <laughs> in the other complex. So it's a real live me. story here. Yes. Um, and uh, it was just one of those things where, um, it, like, the, I could see into his room, and, and the buildings were close enough together um, where it was kind of awkward at times. <laughs> and. I and, uh, it was, like, we, we both knew each other was there, but we didn't want to make eye contact. Um, and so I ended up writing the song kind of inspired by him um, and thinking, you know, what if there is a, what if you were in this type of situation and you could see the things in his room and you thought, oh, we have a lot in common. Is there a love connection? And, uh, but we just, we need to get to hello. We need to you know, get past these these windows, these barriers here. <laughs> All right, well, let's play a little bit of it. This is Boy in the Window from the album Appetizer. We got the same taste in music Eclectic Hall of Fame on your wall Stevie Prince by Motley Tess Henley's album, Appetizer. So, Tess, was he a handsome guy? Well, I couldn't see. I wasn't close <laughs> enough to see his face, but I could see his body uh, uh-huh. when he, uh-huh. he, he, <laughs> <laughs> he would come out of the shower with a towel on and his blinds up. So, he he did have a nice body. Well, he was a little bit I of an exhibitionist, that. wasn't he? Yes, I think he did it on purpose. <laughs> I think so too. I'm sure he saw you, and uh, yeah, I was trying to make a love connection there. <laughs> yeah, well, and he'll never know that this song was written about him. Well, I don't know unless he listens to this. You never know what people know yeah. about you. You never know. So tell me a little bit about what's going on right now with this new album. It's going to be. When's it going to be released? High heels. It's and releasing. 
Yeah, it releases May 7th, and I've been recording for the past two years, pretty much, in Philadelphia with Dice Raw from the Roots and uh, his kind of team of musicians and producers, and one being Kari Mateen, who's worked with the Roots, and Jill Scott, and um, a lot of other great artists. And it's a full-length album, 14 tracks. It's really different, I think, from, from my first couple releases in that it's all organic, all, all real instruments, real horns, real strings. And uh, it's just kind of got a different vibe to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it does. I like that. By organic, you mean no synthesized instruments, that kind of thing. It's all... <laughs> Uh, yeah, no electronic instruments. It's all you said, like clapping, yeah. stomping, breathing. Mm-hmm. It's the body. Yeah, it's the repercussion and the voice. Uh huh. Yeah, we use. I think we used some uh, glass bottles at one point for percussion. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it was really cool, and the musicians were crazy talented. In fact, they're uh, one of the guitarists that played on the album, and he's toured with Music Soul Child and a bunch of people. But he was from Spokane. Oh, funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a small world. It's a small world. Yeah. Well, what inspired you to do it organically like that? It wasn't part of my plan from the start. I just kind of, when I went out to Philly to do some demos to see if, you know, if it was something that I was into or I was feeling, we did a couple songs and I just really liked how everything went. That's when I decided that I wanted to record the full length over there. And then when I got out there, it just kind of it just kind of happened that way. I mean, we we tracked bass, drums, guitar, and keys, and then added the percussion. and And I think just everyone there, all the musicians, it just was kind of it was their style. Uh, it was just they're just real musicians, and it's almost like we didn't need anything. We didn't need to add any synth or that kind of mm-hmm. stuff I think because it's they were. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, and real horns, real strings always feels good. So, mm-hmm. um, well, let's play. Can you was... introduce the song Daydreaming off of it? Let's play a song from it. Okay. Yeah, this is um, the first single off the album. Actually, wasn't supposed to be on the album until uh, I wrote it as a single, and then we added it to the album after the after the fact. But um, this is Daydreaming. Ooh, like what a Daydreaming off the soon-to-be-released High Heels and Sneakers by Tess Henley. So what was it like working with Dice? It was great. He is a, he's a very cool guy, and um, he just made sure everything was there. All the, all the musicians were taken care of, and he brought in the right people. He connected me to Kari Mateen, who is super talented, and poured his heart into the album and that's what I really really want when I'm working with somebody is that they they believe in it and I believe in it and mm-hmm. it was just it was fun that you were working with Andrew Joslin on a piece and he is uh, I, I consider Andrew Joslin to be like Seattle's real gen- musical genius over there he has so many different mm-hmm. styles and he's with Macklemore and Ryan Lewis and he has the passenger mm-hmm. string quartet and uh, mm-hmm. quite a few other things um, he, Chris Orlowski's album he was on that and, and his own albums are you doing something with him mm-hmm. too? Well, I did. Um, I did do the my Christmas song. 
I retracked it, uh, Christmas Won't Do Without You, and he rearranged the strings to it. And then we shot the video with the Passenger String Quartet. Cotton candy clouds in mid-December Snowflakes kiss the ground ever so tender Crowded coffee stands Lovers holding hands Lights in the park Join the stars in a dance Miles from what I know Couples with little ones in tow Longing for my own sweet scent of home Between the moon and the moon Around the corner so Christmas And I hope to do something again with him in the future because he's awesome. Yeah, he's a genius, isn't he? Mm-hmm. I mean, everything yeah. going over and on in Seattle is just amazing. The musical scene, you've compared it to the soul it, The soul scene is like the grunge scene that happened in the 90s uh-huh. over in Seattle. What Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I really think that in the past, I don't know, maybe five, three to five years, there's been just a, a lot of great talent coming out of Seattle. I mean, not just soul, but if you're, you know, talk about Macklemore and a lot of successful artists are coming out of Seattle. And I think it's just a matter of time before more and more people start to realize that it is kind of a hot spot. But I think that soul, there's a, there's a lot of great soul, uh, soul artists coming out of Seattle, especially. And then, you, you know, looking at Alan Carson, um, you have kind of a, more of the soul rock. Uh, like Pot Bodies in Motion, Chocolate is another uh, soul R&B singer from Seattle doing pretty well right now. Yeah, it's just, it's really cool to see and everyone's kind of coming together and supporting each other. That's what's cool, um, yeah, helping each other out. I think the Seattle music scene, from everybody we've talked to, they just seem so connected, you know, and so willing to mm -hmm. help, help each other get a leg up instead of being so yeah. competitive with each other yeah it's a very um it's a very tight-knit community That's of awesome. artists mm -hmm. and not just you know musicians but even artists design artists and you know we're all kind of working with the same group of people and it's really cool to kind of support each other on that very cool well so you were in IMR Magazine, and uh, you know mentioned that you were from Seattle, Washington. You were in there with a lot of other independent musicians, and they were from all over the world. So mm -hmm. how did you feel about that, and, and how did that work out for you? Um, that was a really cool honor, and I always like being able to, you know, I there was a, an interview that went along with that, and it's always nice to kind of share my story with, a publication like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was an honor. Yeah, that was cool. So that was last year, 2012. And then you've also won this big contest of Budweiser MySpace contest. I'm not sure how recently that was, but you won $25,000, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's it, a lot of money. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lifesaver. It really was. That was in 2000. 11, I believe. Oh, okay. That was before um, the IMR deal. Okay. Yeah, that was right before I started recording my album. That was the weirdest thing because I, I've i never really seen um, a competition that's really geared towards soul music. And I remember the two audition songs that you could choose from were Shaka Khan, Sweet Thing, or Brian McKnight's One Last Cry. And I, I knew the songs already. I played them on piano for a while and and so it was perfect and then the the winner opened for Jill Scott and Anthony Hamilton so it was just an amazing experience I've made a lot of good friends you know I, I've even worked with some of the um other contestants oh that's I just cool did a duet yeah I just did a duet with one of the guys that was in um the finals with me yeah it was it was 
<laughs> well, what did you do with uh, that money? How did you did you spend it on uh, producing that album? Yeah, I, it was actually a total of thirty thousand because the semifinals they gave five thousand to each semifinal winner, mm-hmm. and so all that money and then some went to <laughs> recording my album. Oh wow, that's amazing! And which which album was that? This this upcoming one. This one. I yeah. And sneakers. Oh wow. Yeah, I I didn't have awesome. up until that point. I didn't have the money to record the album in Philly, even though I was, you know, I'd signed the agreement with Dice and I was on board to start recording a month later. I, but I I really didn't have the money. My parents were going to take out a, the um, line of credit on oh the my house. Goodness, well they love you. Uh, <laughs> they believe uh, in you. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. That was a uh, saving grace for all of us. That's amazing. That's very sweet of them to to even have thought about doing that. So, oh yeah. They... Do you consider yourself still then an independent? Are you a hundred percent independent still? Yeah, I am. Um, I do have distribution, and I, I have a team of people. Definitely, I think no matter what, if you're independent, you need a team. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as label uh, labels or Asians go, um, it is strictly independent. Well, do you think you're going to want to stay that way? Do you like your independence? Yeah, I really do. Um, it's it's always, nowadays, the labels aren't offering the best deals, you know, and you end up sacrificing a lot of your rights and royalties. And, mm. and in fact, I, had a, I did have a label showcase in January, and I was kind of in the midst of a deal and ended up opting out of it but if you can gain more bargaining power as an independent artist and you a prime example is Macklemore who he doesn't need a label now and he's making way more money Mm -hmm. and he can do what he wants it's just the perfect situation when you really look at it Mm -hmm. if you have all the control all the creative control you want and so it's not the easiest road as you can see I mean he's been doing this for 10 plus years I think but uh, it's the little victories that kind of keep you going. Well, can you introduce <laughs> another song from the album? I'm thinking from the get-go. All, all these songs feel, the ones I've heard so far, feel really good. They're, they make you want to get up and dance. And is, that, is that the kind of music you're looking for? Yeah, I think, well, the reason I kind of called the album High Hills and Sneakers is because it's kind of a mix of fun, upbeat songs and then a little more serious kind of spotlight emotional songs. So some of the guys on Daydreaming are definitely in that kind of upbeat side of things. So did you write the song from the get-go? Is it yours? Yeah, yeah. I wrote, I did a couple co-writes on that album, but um, pretty much wrote most of them um, well, good for myself. You. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Well, let's play a little bit from the get-go off of the soon-to-be-released album High Heels and Sneakers by Tess Henley. You say honey, sweet baby You got it down like a bad girl in the floor And you say honey, lovely lady Oh, you make it sound like you've done this here before Well, we got to, got to me Are you going to be touring with it? Um, I that's the hope. I've been in touch with some agents, booking agents, to talk about that. I work with Power Records Japan, and I've done well in Jap- selling in Japan, so that's that is definitely an option for touring. Yeah, I guess that's probably the biggest the biggest thing on the agenda is once the release happens, just to get out on the road and just play. To sniff you out You don't bother asking What I'm thinking No <laughs> Now that alone is enough to talk about Well, I got to, got to admit I was a little bit curious My premonition proves That what you do is searing us And how do from the get-go 
indie music on this show, and it's, it, I try to find the women artists, and they're more difficult to find because there's way more male indie artists than than there are female for some reason. Do you notice yeah. that too? Yeah, I um, I'm not even sure why though. I have arguments I about this all the time, trying to figure out why, why, why. Um, but yeah. uh, with people who I talk to, we will discuss one side or the other. And, I, you know, I don't know for sure. I know over in Seattle they have Rain City Rain City Rock Camp for girls. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, in fact, we're going to do a show on that coming up here. But they, I love what they're doing because it just seems to me, like I have a son who mm-hmm. is very musical. And when he was really young, he put together a band. I was musical when I was young. I didn't put together a garage band. It just seems to me boys do that more often than girls do. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just like the cool, it's the cool thing to do for guys. Mm-hmm. And girls no, just don't think about sure. it. I don't know. But uh, yeah. I'm going to ask that question when we get the Rain City Rock Camp gals on. But they, what they do, you know, getting girls to play together and sing together and really belt out songs and be loud, you know, I, yeah. I just think it's awesome. You know what? Um, Rain City was actually a part of Carly's CD release show. We ended up donating because we we did a Kickstarter campaign to raise money for the recording of Carly's CD, and we exceeded the amount that we we first set, and we donated um, the rest of the money to the Rain City Rock Camp. Oh, that's awesome! Thank you. That is awesome. I yeah. wish I could have gone to Rain City Rock Camp when I was a kid. It yeah, such a thing didn't exist when I was growing up. Yeah, um, uh, and I think it's just great that they're not only getting girls involved with music, but just building confidence um, in young girls. Why can't she see she's all in more, all in more? If only she could see the truth, she could see the beauty of her youth. Doesn't know about true love, no Being worthy she'd always fall short of Fall short of Her reflection holds no inspiration Not even hope to try Her life just made her wanna cry Well, Tess, you have a great day, um, and enjoy the release of your new CD. I'm looking forward to hearing all of the songs off of High Heels and Sneakers coming out May 7th. Again, go to TessHinley.com, find out more about Tess. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. You said,